We've talked a lot about different aspects of physical geography. We've talked about rocks, land, water, weather, climate, and soil. The scene has been set. The world is prepped. But for what? Life. life, life. Our world is full of life. Plants, animals, bacteria, you name it. The physical nature of our world has made it perfect for life to exist on this planet. And there's plenty of it to go around. Thanks, physical geography. I love you. <laughs> Don't ever leave me. Naturally, studying life on this planet is also a huge part of physical geography. And the name of this part of physical geography is... <laughs> Biogeography. We already know what geography means, a science that seeks to describe the world. And bio means life. You've probably heard it used before in the word biology, which is, in a completely shocking twist, the study of life. Therefore, biogeography is the science of describing, demonstrating, or showing life on the earth. So how exactly does that work? It's actually pretty straightforward. Biogeographers try to answer three questions. What, where, and how many? What type of life there is, where those types of life are found on the earth, and how many of that particular life form there are. Biogeography is first and foremost focused on looking at something we call a species. A species is a specific kind of life. Humans are a species. So are Western honeybees. So are ponderosa pine trees, and Tibetan mastiffs, and pink-tipped anemones, and coral-toothed fungi, and brown marmorated stink bugs, and dromosauruses, and Chinese hamsters, and buffalo grass. There are so many. The type of species is the answer to the what question that biogeographers are looking for. The where comes next, like where on the globe do western honeybees live, or ponderosa pine trees, or Tibetan mastiffs, or pink-tipped anemones, or coral-toothed fungi, or brown marmorated stink bugs, or buffalo grass. You know, that kind of stuff. Scientists estimate that there are about 8.7 million different species of plants and animals on the earth right now, and more are discovered all the time. Which brings us to the how many question. How many ponderosa pine trees are located in the state of California, for instance? Or how many Tibetan mastiffs are there? Or pink-tipped anemones? Or brown marmorated stink bugs? <laughs> the question, how many? is answered by another word, organism. Any species of plant, animal, or any form of life can be counted in terms of numbers of organisms. An organism is one individual member of any species. One Western honeybee, one Chinese hamster, even you are an individual human organism. An organism is an independent life form. For example, if one Dromaeosaurus gets smashed by a boulder, only that one organism dies, but not the entire species, unless the boulder is a meteor from space, but that's another video. Every species is made up of multiple individual organisms. There can be millions or even billions of organisms of the same species. For instance, we are individual human organisms, but there are more than 7 billion human organisms within our human species on the Earth. Now let's expand a little bit. Part of studying where a species lives is studying why a certain species can or can't live in certain places. Some species, like human beings, live in almost everywhere. But then there are tree lobsters. I don't like those guys. Some species, like tree lobsters, can only live in a very specific region of the world. 
Biogeographers, in their efforts to explain what species live where, use all other aspects of physical geography, things like geology, hydrology, and climatology, as ways to describe what lives where. I mean, it's pretty hard to understand fish without understanding water. It is pretty hard to understand monkeys who live in tropical forests or polar bears who live in cold regions without understanding climate. Biogeographers also use biological sciences. That means the study of organisms themselves. Even tree lobsters. <gasps> They learn what about the physical characteristics of certain species allow them to live in certain parts of the world. This leads biogeographers to also look at a science called ecology. To understand and answer the important questions of what, where, and how many. Ecology is a branch of biology that looks very specifically at that relationship between species and the environment around them. Understanding how and why organisms live where they do allows us not only to better understand physical geography, but it gives us knowledge to keep us from accidentally or even, well, intentionally messing it up. Biogeography gives us critical information on how we can better manage and protect life on our planet. Even tree lobsters. Ah! Ooh. Because unfortunately, we human beings haven't always been as kind to the life around us as perhaps we should have been. Sadly, many species have gone extinct in the past because of our carelessness. Extinction or going extinct means that all members of one species have died. This means that species will never ever live again on this earth. And if we're not careful, it could happen again. Remember when we spoke of the 8.7 estimated species of plants and animals on the earth? Well, as many as 1 million of those are currently threatened by extinction due to human activity in the world. So, that's the sad part. Biogeography looks at how humans have and still are causing the rapid extinction of some species and the introduction of others to regions where they never occurred before. But there's still hope. By understanding biogeography, the what, where, and how many of life on earth, and by mixing that with the study of ecology, you can help make the world a better place for all forms of life. Even tree lobsters? <sighs> Thanks for watching. Our mission at Engage Global Storytelling is to tell fun and engaging <laughs> stories from all around the world. Stay tuned and keep coming back each week to see what else we have in store.